a question was forming and the question was this, why? Why had we allowed it to happen? A handful of men had destroyed the planet and only a handful of men were left to rebuild it. What a stupid mistake. Hi, my name's Bob, and this is my Cold War story. I'm a writer with a particular interest in the pop culture of the 70s and 80s. I write for magazines like The Fortean Times, Electronic Sound, and the official Doctor Who magazine. I'm also the host of the Scarred for Life live shows. Together with Stephen Brotherstone and Dave Lawrence, we look at the TV films and even pop music that terrified us as children. As a kid, particularly in the 1980s, the Cold War just seemed to infiltrate every aspect of popular culture. I was 11 throughout 1984, I turned 12 at the end of the year, so it's a very impressionable age anyway, but I just remember Pop music, you had songs like Two Tribes, Frankie Goes to Hollywood at number one. I think pretty much around the same time you had Nana with 99 Red Balloons in the charts. So you've got these huge hit singles that are about nuclear apocalypse. It's on TV. There are big hitters. Things like Threads, extraordinary TV drama from September 1984 about the aftermath of a, a, a nuclear attack on Sheffield. Um, it's one of the most disturbing bits of television ever. I still find it very, very hard to watch even though it's a truly brilliant piece of drama. It bled into science fiction as well. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. So uh, January 1984, we have an episode of Doctor Who called Warriors of the Deep about a, a, a basically a, a near future uh, where two global superpowers, they're not named, they're not identified as the US uh, and the Soviet Union, in the actual episodes themselves, but two global superpowers are on the brink of a nuclear conflict. And again, we're looking at, you know, this is, this is being broadcast ostensibly for children, or certainly for a family audience, uh, early evening, um, weeknights on BBC One. So it, it just appeared like there was no escape at all from, from any of this material. It, it was literally everywhere. You, you couldn't even watch a, an innocent sitcom or a sketch show without hearing about the, the four-minute warning and the, the prospect of nuclear apocalypse. But this was still really troubling me in September 1987 when I started my GCSEs. Uh, my English teacher, Mr. Harrison, uh, gave our class a title and that was the only uh, piece of guidance we were given. We could write about anything we liked so long as we used that title. And the title that he gave us was What a Stupid Mistake. So I, I distinctly remember racking my brains as to what, what the ultimate stupid mistake would be in 1987. And it, for me at that age, and I was 14, um, it was still a nuclear war. So I, I will read you a little extract here. What a stupid mistake. The wind howled through towering columns of rubble, sculpted into eerie cowled figures that cast deep and dark shadows all around. Something stirred. Pockets of civilization still remained. Small groups of men and women lived out a futile existence some nine or ten feet below the ground. This was the scene all over the country, in fact all over most of the globe. Huge cities lay devastated and destroyed. And yet, although there was no one to ask it and no one to answer it, a question was forming. And the question was this. Why? Why had we allowed it to happen? A handful of men had destroyed the planet and only a handful of men were left to rebuild it. What a stupid mistake. 
My name is Bob, and that was my Cold War story. <laughs>